All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, August, which means we are nine days away from the start of the NFL season kicking off. But in the meantime, we got some baseball to break down. So uh, I don't know, man. Let's get it rolling. Big contests in the lobby today. Um, big slate. Good pitching options, good hitting options. I'm excited to talk this one out with you. Uh, ended up using the Yankees last night, as you kind of talked me on to. They were pretty good. Um, Houston was not very good. The Blue Jays weren't great, obviously. The Blue Jays and Padres, except for Tatis and Guerrero, as the two chalkiest players, were really good. So that kind of hurt. Yeah, it was one of those days. I woke up to winning because I actually fell asleep before baseball. And then last night, woke up to like just over the min cash, which is like I'll live with it because Stanton hovered late, which is a big help. Uh, and the pitching was good because Robbie Ray and the kid from Texas, whatever, were both really good. So, yes, they were. Yeah, we'll call it a ho hum day and move on to today. And hopefully, we can do better than ho hum. For sure. All right, as far as weather goes today, Cincy and St. Louis is not anything we need to worry about. Uh, Philly versus Washington is a game to keep your eyes on, really. Uh, there could be offense right there, so we're probably not trying to hone in on those pitchers, but potentially maybe for offense. Other than that, weather's not a thing. Yeah, which is always nice on a big slate like this. All right, man, so you mentioned there's a bunch of good pitching options. Is there anywhere you're leaning as of this morning? It's hard not to look at Giolito at that price is like the top guy. I mean, right? I think he'll be crazy chalk. I know early day projections have him as the highest owned pitcher, but only like by a little bit. Uh, I think he ends up being the highest owned pitcher by a decent amount personally. Yeah. I mean, especially like you go in those, the higher dollar, smaller person fields, he's going to be even more popular. Um, but it makes sense. Like I know he can get hit around from time to time, but I don't really see this as that spot. That said, didn't see Kansas City being that spot either. Right. So from a purely ownership perspective, and as things really shift, like if the day's like progressing and he looks even chalkier than expected, I get more enticed by the GPP thing, mostly because there's other options out there, there today. There are, but I guess my question would be like, well, not my question. The, the point would be like everyone above him has question marks as well. Like Agreed. there are good, good pitchers above him, but – you know, like I like Woodruff a lot, but the spot isn't as good. No, a uh, thing of note for Giolito, as far as home to road splits, you couldn't find somebody more exact than this guy. So I just wanted to point that out because that's that's pretty crazy. You don't usually see this. Same whip, same batting average, ERA and points, almost all exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, so don't worry about it being in the more pitcher friendly Chicago than Pittsburgh. I think if you're playing a cash game, he's where you start. And if you like them, just do your thing and play them everywhere. Yeah, it is like, I mean, the GPP fade is definitely enticing, though, because it's not like Giolito's Jacob deGrom. And there's other, I mean, as you mentioned, like very good pitchers around him. They also have question marks, but it doesn't mean their upside is any less. Right, like I, I like Walker Bueller a lot. Uh, I just, for me, yeah, Atlanta's pretty good, but they will strike out. And I just think Walker Bueller right now is arguably, with the deGrom injuries, as good as any pitcher in baseball. Yeah, um, it's funny because like you look at like the underlying metrics, like the like the a lot of like the underlying metrics have Woodruff as even the better pitcher than Bueller, like higher strikeout percentage, less walks, less like I like both of them a lot, to be honest. Yeah. Who do you fear more, Atlanta or San Francisco? I still feel fear well, more I, that Atlanta will like put up 10 spot on you, same. but they'll also strike out more. I fear Atlanta for blowing someone up, but San Fran is so pesky and they're beyond pesky because they're actually good. They're good and pesky. Yeah. And last night Burns was pretty solid, but he, he had real. his, he had his best stuff last night. It was all working. Yeah. He looked really I mean, good. My biggest problem with Woodruff, not even, I wouldn't say problem, a question mark is not even the matchup. It's that he was awesome last time out, but he had struggled a couple of times before that. So, I mean, and now the matchup's tough. The, the, I will say the matchup's tough in terms of the Giants being good, but it's also in a great pitcher's ballpark, great pitcher's weather. So it's not like the worst spot in the world. Sounds like I like Woodruff a little bit more than you. Um, But like, I guess, okay, if you were going to fade Giolito and play two guys, you know, above him, who would they be? Above him. I probably wouldn't play two above him. I would probably play Walker Bueller. And then I have some interest in some of the cheaper guys. Fair enough. Well, who's your second favorite high-end guy behind Bueller? 
We're talking to Bob Giglio. Yep. Oof. Morton, Woodruff, McCullers. Wow, so you don't really like any of those guys. I don't really love any of those guys. I guess if I was paying up, I'd probably go Giolito Bueller, honestly. And you don't even like Giolito that much, it sounds like. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's a good play, right? If I was playing a cash game tonight, I would definitely use Giolito. Um, it just sounds to me like I don't your love it. preference is Walker Bueller here. You're fine with Giolito, but Walker Bueller is the guy you want to lock in. I mean, I just I look at the way Walker Bueller has been, and this was not a surprise, right? Like when this kid came up, he was all the rage. He was pretty good right away, he's and so, now he now he just looks great. Yeah, he's so good. Um, they're going to be tough to beat now with the addition of Scherzer. All of a sudden, their staff is awesome. Um, yeah, I, I get it. He's expensive, but man, I am having a tough time. You know, between Bueller, Woodruff, and Giolito at their respective prices. Another point for Walker Bueller. Look at that pitch count, baby. 106, 107, 110, 113. Yep. Speaking of pitch counts, and I know you want to talk about some cheaper guys. One guy that I am not going to use that I know is going to get love is Blake Snell. So on one hand, it's good. He's thrown over 100 pitches in four out of the last five, which is nice to see from him. But, man, I cannot go to him after a 122-pitch outing on the road where he's been awful. Like, this is definitely not for me. He's been, on, he's he's been terrible on the road. That? Thinking about, because uh, Arizona's got awful, but really, really reticent to actually go there. I actually like the pitcher on the other side. Gallon's been really good recently. Yeah, and there's. I'll explain to you why that happened here in just a second. I have a really good reasoning behind it. Uh, Snell, Giolito, to me, is probably the likely chalk pairing of pitchers today. And I think they both can get hit. But there's no guarantee that they both get it. Snell has looked a lot better lately. Yeah, but. I mean, but if I'm you, give me Giolito like all day over Snell at home against Pittsburgh. I mean, look at Snell on the road. Like, I mean, yeah, it's huge discrepancy. I, I will say though, it was at like two fantasy points per game, so he has been better than that recently. Like, not amazing though. I mean, he had that really good start against Oakland. Yeah, he's he's dropped 14 plus in five straight, so maybe he's finding himself. So that's why, yeah. like, if you like him today, I get it but I'm still struggling to trust him on the road. I agree. I mean, a guy that I'm interested in also around there, and I'm also interested in the other side, is Scooble. Okay. Uh, let's go through Gallon, then we'll, we'll move down to Scooble. So Zach Gallon has been really good the last two times out. And we're talking at Colorado, which is not an easy place to pitch. Everybody knows that. And then at Philly, which, you know, Philly's a decent team. So it's I wouldn't say it's a hard Bad matchup, ballpark. but it's not the easiest one, right? Bad ballpark for pitching. Well, Zach Gallon's recent dominance is 100% directly correlated to me cutting him in your long fantasy <laughs> leagues. So it only makes sense, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm interested to hear what this reasoning is. Um, it had to no. be the reason. I, I am the, I, just like Derrick Henry's career turning around, I have to say that I'm the, the whole reason behind it. Yeah, uh, I am definitely interested in Gallon in tournaments. I mean, I don't feel like it's the safest play in the world because San Diego's good, but. Give me Gallon over Snell. I mean, for yeah, sure. Yeah, give me Zach Gallon and GPPs at one tenth of the ownership to outscore Blake Snell tonight. Yeah, but honestly, give me all those guys around Snell. Tyon, like I mentioned, Scooble. Not even that I'm going to use any of them, but I think they could all be better than uh, what's his name, Snell. And Scooble's been good recently. He's got good strikeout stuff. So I yeah. used him the other day against St. Louis, and he was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Only gold got to him. Yeah, right. He's got four straight really, really nice starts. He's got decent strikeout stuff, not great. He hasn't dropped into the negatives in a long time. His bad starts were at least positive. Um, and he's been in double digits at eight to ten. So this guy is, you know, there aren't a ton of bright spots on Detroit, but this guy looks like he could be like a legit number two. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I he's good. Uh, I think you could also he gives up power, so you could also make a case for a case for a couple Oakland bats. But at seventy four hundred, he's clearly got upside, as evidenced by the twenty in a row he's thrown the past three. And Oakland is not playing their best offensive baseball the last couple of weeks, so I'm not. I don't want to go on after them like, oh, it's a great matchup, but I'm not scared of Oakland right now. Fair. You know, I'll put him in the mediocre matchup right now. Uh, below that though, I got nothing. Um, the one guy I'm interested in a little bit is, is Edward Cabrera top prospect brought him up last time. 
this was one he was pitching so well, just wasn't getting strikeouts, and then got hit in his last inning, and they pulled him. He pitched so much better than this 7.5, uh, you know, than it than this shows. I watched a lot of the start. He was really good. He pitches with a lot of poise. I mean, I know you don't mind picking on the Mets. Like, in a seven-inning game here, I could definitely see using him. Yeah, that makes sense. I remember you talking about him last time now. And honestly, if you want to get real cheap, yeah. I don't yeah, think Jordan right. Lyles is a bad play. I don't even think that's real crazy. I mean, he had tw- – I mean, listen, Jordan Lyles can get hit by anyone, but he can also pitch well against anyone. This is a classic one where I could see using Lyles and I could see stacking Colorado. Absolutely. Uh, Jordan Lyles, you all know he's not great, so – don't take this as like the top end ringing endorsement. Just look through his recent game log and you understand why this is a risky play. However, mixed into there, we got five double digit starts, including three of them in the 20s. So at 5,200 against one of the worst teams in baseball, you're not crazy to go here if you really like high end bets. Yeah, Colorado's so bad on the road. Um, yeah. Give me Hernandez over him, but like I don't think he's definitely a guy I don't think is crazy at all. Okay, uh, so there's a variety of pitchers in play today. Let's circle back after we talk this out through a little bit offensively, and we'll kind of give you our favorites. As you can tell, I'm leaning Walker Bueller, but maybe my mind will change as we run through these. For sure. Um, I don't have a strong preference. Uh, I am starting to like that Cabrera more, though. The more I just like that price point. And I, I will say there's a lot of good pitching options, but no one I love. And I think it's a lot. Even Bueller, who I think is, you know, him and Woodruff, the two best pitchers on the slate, like, I'm never excited about picking on Atlanta. Right. Uh, and I'm not excited about picking on San Francisco either. I'm not excited about either of them. There is no love, love, love plays today. And there is no slam dunk Max Scherzer <laughs> against the, you know, at home against Colorado. And ever since I said that about, you know, just Giolito and that KC start, like this is a very similar spot. Because at first I was thinking that they were in Pittsburgh here, but now in Chicago, like, I mean, much better hitters park than in Pittsburgh. Like, it's not crazy to think that they are scrappy against him today. It's not crazy to me at all. And it shouldn't be to think that Snell and Giolito combined for 12 points today. It was like this exact same type of slate when Giolito got lit up by KC. It was a big, like, Monday or Tuesday slate. KC won the slate against him. Uh, So, yeah, that is definitely, like, in my head, especially with other just better pitchers on the slate. All right. Well, let's talk offense. What about offense in this first game? We got Philly against Washington, Corbin against Matt Moore. Corbin sucks. I feel like Matt Moore might be better than Corbin now, which is probably not true. But, yeah, I could see offense from either side. I'm not, like, excited about it, though. You know, it's funny is their ERA is .03 apart. So uh, they're neither one is good. You know, Corbin was good against the Brewers a while back. Okay, That's okay. Every- yeah, every once in a while he'll throw it up. But look at these home runs allowed. Like, this guy gives up at least a home run every start. Yeah, he has completely lost it. And Philly's got power. I mean, I will say no real Muto if he's out. Like, that sucks. Um, but, I mean, listen, Bryce Harper crushes. He's hot right now. Uh, their lineup is, like, not that inspiring at the moment. Give me Bryce Harper at low ownership. Yeah, I get that. Uh, I mean, he's hot, and he's he's like right there for NL MVP. Philly was better. He'd probably – it's hard for him to pass Tatis because of the, you know, the double-digit home run discrepancy and just the 61 RBIs. But if they were like winning their division, I don't know. I think, yeah, he would be right up there. I think he might be the betting favorite right now. Is he really? About to check. You check could, you that could out. be 100% right that it's Tatis. It's going to be weird. Like, I feel like all the offensive MVP candidates here, none of them are really coming from teams that are competitive. No. And, yeah, uh, like, and the Padres have fallen, too. Yep. Big time. Like, big, big time. Uh, I'm just assuming. Yeah, Tatis is definitely the favorite by a long, long shot. So, yeah, you're right. Okay. All right, uh, I, this is a game for me, other than Bryce Harper, I don't have specific favorite players, but you could definitely get me all over, like, half stack, full stack of this game. I agree. I mean, on a many a slate, this game would be much more appealing. Yeah, it, it just really comes down to the fact that I have no, no belief in any of these pitchers. So uh, I could be intimidated like, by this game. I like the Bryce Harper call, and these offenses won't get love. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind, there is weather concerns here. Yep, absolutely. So... 
Uh, kudos to us yesterday. We kind of called out that Vlad was going to have a big day. Uh, we said that, that we saw the two singles, the walk of the day before. He was due, and those were definite buying signs. He came through with a big 32 spot last night, so he was good. Uh, I'm assuming he'll be popular again today, and he makes a lot of sense as, a, as like your top high-end money player. Yeah. Um, Keegan Aiken was awesome last time out. I actually used him in that day slate. I think you covered that. He was really freaking good. Uh, I'm not expecting that here. He's been a lot better at home. It's Toronto's the top stack on the board. Ryu's another pitcher that's in play that we didn't even talk about. It's true. We didn't. Uh, he's a little pricey for me, but he's definitely in play. Yeah, if nothing else. Probably not the slate for him, but in play if nothing else. I think Toronto looks really good here. Yeah, Toronto's going to be popular. Deservedly so. Uh, all their outfielders, Gritchek, Guriel, Hernandez, Springer, take a look at the starting lineup. Bo Bichette's playing decently right now. Marcus Simeon's crushes lefties. Vlad Guerrero just kind of started getting hot again. Kirk in the middle of the lineup. Look, Toronto should be very, very popular today for all the obvious reasons, and they make a lot of sense. Yeah, they do. Um, Baltimore bullpen's so bad also, so yeah. All right, this is a seven-inning game. Cabrera against Trevor Williams. Uh, probably not where we're going to go. No, definitely not where I'm going for offense. I don't even think Trevor Williams is crazy. No, he's actually getting a little love today. Yeah, I mean, he's so cheap in a seven-inning game against the Marlins. All right, Yarborough versus what looks to be a bullpen game for Boston. Uh, J.D. Martinez has big-time numbers off of Yarborough, if you want to take that for anything. Uh, I think, you know, like in a Rosarina, Verdugo, these guys are very affordable. I would say this game gets a little love as well. You think it gets love? A little love. Not a ton, not overwhelming chalk or anything like that, but uh, a game where you'll get, like, a little bit of attention to some of the cheaper players, you know, specifically like in a Rosarina. Maybe like a Bobby Dahlbeck, who's 3,100. Got a whole bunch of home runs lately. Yeah, I mean, I like it, though. It's such a big slate. I don't think you have to worry about ownership at all with teams like this. I think, like you said, Toronto, and it looks like Minnesota is getting a ton of love. Other than that, and the White Sox, too. I mean, everyone else outside of that, I think, is going to be very low-owned. Yeah, I think you'll see in this game a couple of guys, price plays that get some love as like one-offs or small stacks. But if you full stacked it, that won't be popular. For sure, no doubt. So, I think Dahlbeck, and again, a Rosarina is 4,300, and Verdugo's 3,800. You know, Rosarina's kind of picked it up the last couple days. Home run, stolen base the last two days. He'll get a little love at this price. Yeah. It's funny. Right now, they have Dahlbeck is projected like the lowest owned first baseman, 0.5% owned. Well, I struggle to say he's that low owned, but he's not going to be chalky or anything. Same. I agree with both those statements. So, all right, moving along. Oakland against Detroit. Scooble against Cole Irvin. Uh, I get your point for taking a look at, you know, Oakland against uh, Scooble, but I'm more team Scooble here. And I don't hate a cheap place to Detroit here and there if they got any that you feel like are affordable in the starting lineup. Yeah, the thing is, Detroit is a little bit more expensive here. Um <sighs> Man, uh, this is a tough one. I, I get the school side. I also get the Oakland side. Um, I mean, the thing is, like, Oakland's got big power. They're in a ballpark upgrade here as, terms, as far as hitting goes. And they've they've got a – I mean, it, I know they're not in their greatest form, but I still respect this lineup a lot. So I'm torn on this one. I see both sides. Probably don't land on either because of – Yeah, it. I probably don't get to anything in this game. Scooball, to me, is like a deeper honorable mention. And then the offenses just really aren't for me right here because of their pricing and everything like that. So this is mostly a ignore spot for me. Yeah, I get that for sure. All right, next up, Colorado against Texas. So, you know, you mentioned a couple guys from Texas yesterday. And my boy Austin Gomber has been, you know, he's been riding the struggle bus throughout the month of August. He had a nice start against Miami. Most people do. And other than that, all four of his other starts have not gone very well. So you put me on to Solak last night who was a big help to getting me in the money. Uh, he's 2,400 today. This is now, you know, multiple good games that he's had over the past week. We're coming up on six and seven of his last eight games. He's gone for eight for seven points or more. He's 2,400. Yeah. Um, and it looks like Gomber's actually coming in with like 10% ownership, you know, just because of the matchup. And Texas has not been bad recently. So I don't think they're crazy, even as like a full stack how cheap they are. I mean, Solak, kind of for Leffa. Like, they're better against lefties also. Um, 
So who's the other guy? Peters, I think you brought up yesterday, right? Peters also, yeah. Uh, who was a guy that was on the like a Dodgers farmhand forever, but they just had so many guys got rid of him. A coach on Texas used to coach for the Dodgers and uh, like really liked him, and he's been good for Texas. He's got 19 plus and three of five. He's seen the ball well right now. You can stack Peters and Solak at 24 and 24. They're both playing well uh, against a struggling Gomber. And this just opens up so much cap space. And I'm still like, these guys won't be unowned because they're so cheap and in a starting lineup, but they're not going to be chalky. No, not at all. And honestly, man, the more I look at this slate, like there are cheaper pitchers that I am more than fine rolling with. But if I can fit Bueller and Woodruff, that's my favorite pairing. Yeah, get DJ Peters and Nick Solak in there. Yeah. It's going to be easy to do. Yeah, and those other, I mean, even Dolis, 3,500. Absolutely. You still got big power. For sure. I mean, besides, so the same, he was good recently. Yeah, and the same thing applies to me for Colorado that did yesterday. Like, I get stacking them. Uh, even though I made the case for Jordan Lyles, I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys Jordan Lyles is good. They're just too expensive for me to want to prioritize them. I, I'll never like them enough on the road to go spend 5,500 on CJ Crone, even if the spot is good. Yeah, I get that. I will say one guy that was even really good yesterday, Trevor Story, uh, two homers yesterday. He will be unowned. Trevor Story, we've mentioned this all season long. He's like Tatis. He's not quite as good, but with that power and speed, on any given day, his upside is good as any player in baseball. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's Jordan Lyles isn't good. So No, not at all. All right, this game, we got Giolito versus Wilson. What about the White Sox? Yeah, it looks like they're the, another team that's getting quite a bit of love, and it makes sense. They, they've they been really good recently. Their lineup's lethal. I mean, there's a lot to like about them. Robert Jimenez, Abreu, like Grandal has been awesome since he returned. And Grandal gets like this, where when he gets hot, he is yeah. just on fire. Yep. So... I get that. Uh, I think the White Sox are a team to watch. If they end up getting really, really popular, you might want to give them a heavy look in cash games. If their ownership starts to fade, check them out closer in GPPs. Yep, I'm with both those statements like wholeheartedly. All right, Plesak versus Minor. Uh, obviously, we don't really fear Kansas City, but we don't love Zach Plesak. I know. I just want to go back. One guy on Pittsburgh, just because you know we're talking about Giolito, Yoshi Tetsugo. So got picked up by the Pirates. Did a walk-off home run last game. He's been good recently. I do not hate that. Yeah, 2,700. Why not? Low ownership. He's going to be hitting like third or cleanup here, and they have a DH tonight. There you go. Uh, how about this game? Uh, I think this game, honestly, if I were looking at anything, I think it would be minor. Okay. But I'm not. Giving up a lot of home runs lately, too, if like you want to look at like a Reyes or something like that. Yeah. Like, Reyes and Ramirez are always in play, right? But these guys are pricey today in a bad ballpark against a decent enough pitcher, right? Yeah, I don't think I end up on this game. Whit Merrifield's 4,400, fine. He's definitely played better up until last game. He had been really no. good. Actually, he's been on fire. Take that back. Yeah, I'd I t- written him up a bunch of times. He's been really good. Him and Salvador Perez. I mean, Salvador Perez having a year. I mean, Salvador Perez, if it wasn't for Otani yeah. and Vlad, would be like right, and if they weren't god awful, whole we'll finish right there. Yeah, he would have to be like even talked about more for the MVP. Right, agreed. I honestly think that if those guys, like you took those guys out, he'd be right there at the front because record I feel like matters, but not nearly as much as it once did. Like they realize now that like the individual performance like supersedes how good the team is. See Otani. Now Otani's different because he's pitching and hitting. But, like, Perez as a catcher putting up these numbers is really impressive. Well, if Perez was the catcher for the Tampa Bay Rays right now, I think he'd be the leading candidate for MVP. I think he would surpass other guys. But they're so bad that, you're right, it doesn't make as big of a difference. But it still is a little bit in the back of their mind. So if he played for a really good team, like, I think he might be the winner this year. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. And I'll say this, as far as tonight goes, He's another guy that's in play as a one-up any slate he's on, if you can get there. Like, if you're spending down on one of those cheap pitchers and have money to spend, he's my favorite catcher option any slate, and tonight's no different. Now, I know he plays more than your average catcher, so he doesn't take a lot of games off. This guy's got 38 home runs at the like, catching position in a terrible ballpark for home runs. Yeah, and a bad lineup. Yeah, so he can get pitched around. So yeah. this is truly impressive. 
Like one of the best hitting years for a catcher ever. No doubt about it. Uh, he's going to end up the year with 40 and 100, which is really hard to do for anybody, yeah. much less a catcher in Kansas City. Yeah, so for sure. We see that similarly. But as far as this game goes, I just can't see using it on this slate. No, but you got me sold on the, the Perez Merrifield combo is kind of interesting. Yeah, if you can get there for sure. So you're saying Minnesota against Zach yeah. Davies is getting a bunch of love. One thing I want to say, Plesak has been awful against righties. So that Merrifield and Perez, like, you're not looking at that like, oh, the platoon advantage stinks there. No, um, I look at it this way. I, I won't get there in my Same. one lineup that I'll set tonight. But if I set three, there might be a perez Merrifield combo. And no one will use them. Exactly. All right, so Zach Davies has had a, you know, it's, obviously he hasn't had a very good year. Gives up a lot of home runs. Uh, you got a, what it appears to be a relatively chalky Minnesota today. I get that. I think Byron Buxton, I think it's three for three off of him. Still very, very affordable. I'll say the same thing I'll say about Buxton though, that I've said since he's come back at this ownership he ain't playing well. I know he finally doubled the other day, but man, just on ownership alone with all those outfielders. As much as I hate to say this, I mean, it, give me the Cubs over the twins here at their ownerships. Uh, Minnesota's coming in really chalky because they're so cheap, and I get it. But, like, I'll pick on John Gant. It's Cubs in a nice ballpark with a DH. Like, they've had decent games recently. I'm with it. I, I like. We I'm not the saying stuff. they're my favorite stack, but give me them over the Twins for sure. Like, just playing a team because they're cheap. It's, yeah. You know, it's something that you <laughs> preach against all the time in baseball because it's where people get locked in based on price. But sometimes you want to make some concessions in some other areas just because, you know, I love Jorge Polanco. He's been awesome and he's finally fairly priced, but let's just say he was 3,200. Like he had been a lot recently. He's no guarantee. This is baseball. The same basketball, the same Russell Westbrook at AK. And he's still pretty cheap for what he's been. Um, like how good he's been. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to get so much love because their price tags fit with good pitching. And it's not like they're in a bad spot, so they could easily succeed here. But, I mean, uh, um, I won't bet on it. I gotcha. How about going right back to the Yankees tonight? Why not? Berea sucks. I know you are very anti-Berea. Uh, he was all right the other day, but he's given you very few reasons to think differently about him. Um you know, last night I used the whole outfield. Judge and Stanton were both good. Gallo, I think, was pretty much a no I was, yeah. I fell asleep also, and I was, like, worried about Stanton because I saw he went, like, he had been red hot and then went, oh, like, he, on Saturday he took the over, and then on Sunday I think he went over in his last two at-bats, and then I saw he was over 2 last night when I fell asleep, so it was nice to see that he homered. I think these guys are right back in play. I mean, real good plays. Agreed. You're going to get Rizzo at a very affordable price at 3,800. He had a nice night last night. Um, I, I could go back to the Yankees. I don't think they're going to be my team today. There's more teams up Same. to look at, but there's still a team that I would consider. And I'll say this. I don't think the Yankees stack is like like overly popular at all, but a couple pieces like Rizzo is projected to be the highest on first baseman. That makes sense with his price tag. It's just wrong. And then Gallo and Judge are going to get a lot of love. Give me Stanton. Yep, agreed. We bypassed Tyon in the pitcher discussion. I'm probably not going to end up here, though, so I don't really feel the need to go into a ton of details on him. He had been pitching really well for a while. I don't think it's a bad play. I just don't think I'm going to end up on him. I agree with that. Right. But I'm not really interested in the Angels either. Mm -hmm. So I probably won't use Snell either in my one lineup, but I'm certainly not trying to get to uh, you know, the Diamondbacks. They're not cheap. You know, I used Varsho last night because he's a catcher in the middle of the lineup for 3,800. He was fine. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not probably not going to use Snell, but I'm still not trying to leverage stack against him necessarily. Oh, man. I'm def I could definitely see using a couple pieces. Like, um, you know, you're going to have probably Nick Ahmed leading off, Christian Walker at 2,400. They remind me of Texas facing a worse pitcher, but I mean, a better pitcher. But like, uh, what's it called? I just mentioned Nick Ahmed. Cattell Marte hit a grand slam last night. Uh, like, those guys I could get on board with. Yeah, Nick Ahmed's not my guy because I had him in my lineup on the 26 and pulled him, and then he hit a 20 spot. So I'm mad at him, although that should just be mad at myself on that one. But, no, that makes sense. I get that. 
Carson Kelly. Like, I'm not trying to go five deep on Arizona, but if they, I, I get a couple of these guys in my lineups, especially because I have no interest in Snell, then I'm not, I, I'm good with it. So Cueto got uh, scratched late last night. It was like a COVID precaution, but it sounds like he's good to go today. So you can make really? a look at him. I hadn't heard that. I think it was like, um, I, it was something to do with like a last minute like somebody he'd been in contact with was showing signs or something. I didn't get the full details on it. It was pretty sketch. Uh, well, but it sounds like he's going to pitch today, probably. I just hadn't even heard that he was pitching today. Okay. Uh, I heard last night during the game that it was likely he would be able to go today, but I would just keep watching that because I, I don't know that for sure or even close to knowing it for sure. Yeah. All right, cool. I mean, I don't know it either, but – Either way, I'm not overly excited about the offenses in this game. One off, oh. sure. Yelich looks decent right now. So I could see that, but I'm not looking to full stack here. Agreed. I was just going to say Yelich is really cheap at 4,400 because he is starting to play better. His yeah. numbers, he's still hitting into bad luck, but he's not striking out as much. He's taking his walk still. Uh, he's hitting the ball all over the place. I mean, again, he's far from a must, but he is showing signs of like, breaking out of this couple year funk. Yeah, he is. That's about it. But one team we kind of just glossed over is the Padres. I know we both respect Gallon, but we didn't even touch on them. And I think they're definitely worth t- talking about at least. They got it going a little bit last night. They know they, they scored five early and then I wasn't really watching after that. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I fell asleep also, but suddenly like Grisham's three of six with a few extra base hits. Tatis is three of seven with a few extra base hits. So these guys have seen the ball well off Gallon, if nothing else. Okay. I won't go there, but you know what I mean? Like they're, those are good players. Exactly. I mean, it's similar spots to like the Dodgers against Morton. Like you're not prioritizing them, but they're the Dodgers and the Padres have that type of upside. All right. Uh, Bueller versus Morton. Um, Morton's been good. I'm not using him against the Dodgers, but this is not the day that I'm trying to get the Dodgers to be good against a good pitcher. They're capable. They're definitely capable. I just won't actually do it personally. With me not on Giolito, or me not on Snell, and then you kind of getting in my head about Giolito, I could see pivoting to Morton. Like, just taking the chance on a really good pitcher in a real tough spot. Like, he's been really good. Uh, He's going to have a full leash today. Like, I mean, listen, it's an awful spot. The Dodgers, I'm not going to go here, but I'm more likely to go here than the Dodgers personally. One of the hardest things to do in DFS and fantasy sports in general is change your opinion on somebody. And I've always been a Charlie Morton guy, but at the start of the year, I said, I I don't know if he has anything left in the tank. Um, He's proved me wrong since then. And I've used him a lot over this year. I won't use him tonight, but he could definitely outscore Giolito or Snell or both tonight. Right. So, like, if it were a smaller slate, then I could see pivoting there. I just don't need to pivot here to get away from those guys. Agreed. Then the last game, Houston against Seattle. We got Kikuchi against McCullers. Um, Kikuchi's a guy, like, I could – again, I know you liked Houston last night and they let you down a little bit. I could get on board with Houston today. I don't think they'll actually be my stack, but I could understand using them. They destroyed Kikuchi last time they saw him. Uh, and Kikuchi's not in his greatest form. The Houston's hasn't been great recently. It's the same story, though. Like, they're not getting any love. They're not – I, I kind of feel the same exact way you, you do. They're not going to be my stack. But, I mean, unlike, like, Morton and the Dodgers, I'm definitely team Astros over Kikuchi. Oh, agreed. No doubt about that. I, I just won't get there. They're so pricey. Yeah, they are very, very pricey for sure. So I like it for me, if I'm go ahead. I was going to say one team, the two teams I'm digging on just from like talking this out are Texas and uh, the other one was go forward in the games for a second. Like Texas and the Cubs. Okay. I can see that nobody's going to use the Cubs. No, no one's going to use the Cubs and they're in a good spot. I mean, a lot of times the teams opposing John Gant are chalk. Oh, there's something to be said for that. I think if it was me right now, I'd be starting my lineup with Bueller and Zach Gallen. Taking my chances on Gallen today. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, however, if you want to pivot up from Gallen to Giolito, that also makes sense. And then you just mentioned Texas again. 
I think for me with Texas, I'm going to slide right down here. And I'm going to be throwing Solak. You know, there's a couple other guys you can get here too. Yeah. Heiner Falefa. The other and, guy is Yanni Hernandez, third and second base eligible. He's been hitting leadoff. Like, just check the game log for a guy that's 2,700. And he runs a lot. Like, got caught stealing last night, which doesn't show up here. But for a guy under 3K, that's a nice game log. And here's the other thing. Like, if I do this. You can stack whoever. Yeah, I was just saying, you can like Toronto because now you can actually afford them. I can get their best pieces. Vlad's the top guy I'm interested in, but I can still grab Bo Bichette. I'm different with Texas. I'm different with Gallon, so I don't have to worry about the fact that this is a chalk team. And then I could also throw Springer in here. Like, So I got Springer, I, Bichette, Guerrero, but I'm different everywhere else. I will say this. Solak is like a lock for me. If I were making one lineup, he's definitely in it. 2,400. Good against he's lefties. Not- like he got sent down to the minors for a while. He's been hot since they called him back up. Like he's trying to get back that second base job. Crushes lefties. What a great spot for him. You know, I uh, we always view sports a little bit differently, and sometimes, you know, you're looking for motivation that I don't always the players need, and then maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way some days and stuff like that. But for me, like your point right there makes a lot of sense, and that is like this is a guy now playing for his job. Like while the rest of Texas has nothing to play for, he does. Yeah. I mean, well, all these guys, you could say that, like, the organization isn't playing for anything. These guys are playing for their jobs, especially a guy like that who's now turned into kind of a journeyman. Yeah, for sure. So um, I guess early in the day, if I was set in the lineup right now, I would use a couple good pieces of Toronto because I don't respect Keegan Aiken at all. You know, they got things kind of rolling again the other day now. So, you know, seven runs isn't, like, blowing up, but they had been struggling a lot recently. So... Uh, give me like Springer, Bichette, Guerrero, a couple of cheap Texas pieces nobody uses, and I'm a little bit different on pitching too. So I got a chalk offense, but the rest of my lineup isn't. So it sounds like you like Toronto over like the White Sox. I do, but it's possible I could change that, and I could still go grab you a piece Grandal of here. Yeah, I can get Grandal, or you know, if I decide I really like Luis Robert, who is you know fantastic, playing really really well right now, I can lock him in there. And now I'm looking at the catcher position. Well, I might just keep up with the Blue Jays right here and just throw Austin Kirk in the mix. Yeah, Alejandro, but yeah. Alejandro, yes. A little bit different, but the point was well taken. Yes. He's got Who big power also. Who is Austin Kirk? Why is that name in my head? Is that a sure. ball player? I yeah, it doesn't matter. But anyway, that's the general idea. Uh, for you, who would be your pitchers as of right now? I think, honestly, I'm looking at, you know, depending on the roster build, Bueller Woodruff or one of those guys in Hernandez. But Bueller Woodruff, it's just so easy to get. Throwing Hernandez, Solak, Peters. I don't even mind full stacking There's Texas here. Gomber is not in good form. Texas is, looks good right now, and I like these teams. Like, it will run out eventually. It could be tonight, but they haven't played well a lot this year. Like, so they're feeling themselves a bit. They got motivation right now. I mean, you have two of the best pitchers in baseball going tonight. A four-man stack against a struggling pitcher, and now legit can go wherever you want with the rest of your lineup. You can pick out your best one-offs. You can stack the Blue Jays. You can stack the White Sox. And I mentioned I like like the Cubs. Frank Swindell, 3,200 at first. Plug him in. I mean, now all of a sudden it's like almost at too much now. Yeah, Bryce Harper. Exactly. So. All right, guys. Uh, Aaron we'll, Judge, whoever. There's so many good plays on this slate, but that's the nature of the beast. Yeah, we will wrap her up for the day then. Uh, we appreciate you all watching for a longer one, but it was a big slate, so we had a lot to talk about. Yep, and thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow.